What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back to the Centro Health Training Center for another episode of Broncos Now. As always, I'm your host, Sydney Jones, and coming up on today's episode, the Broncos had their first mandatory minicamp practice. So we'll hear from head coach Sean Payton, wide receivers Jerry Judy and Tim Patrick, and more. All that coming up. The Broncos held their first mandatory minicamp practice on Tuesday. It was their first of three this week before the players and coaches head out for their summer break before the start of training camp. Head coach Sean Payton spoke to the media following Tuesday's practice and talked about his main takeaway from the day. You know, they're making progress. We, we've got a few guys. We're allowed to have some tryout players here. We have a few. Um, and then, uh, you know, we carried it over into training camp. And we start again with the first install. And so repetition, you know, obviously has always been the mother of learning. You know, and you repeat it, you repeat it. Um, too many flags on the ground for me today. You know, it was good to have the officials here. Um, and yet, you know, we ran out of sand in some of the penalty, you know, flags. So they had to go get backup flags. Um, before you start figuring out how to win, you got to know, not, you know, how not to lose. And so last year we ranked... I don't even want to give it to you, 28th and 27th, 29th in pre-snap fouls on both sides of the ball. And uh, that's going to change. So it's good to have that pointed out. And uh, I like the way they're practicing. I, I like the intensity. I like their effort. And, and I think, um, man, they're, they're working hard. Um, but you also got to be smart. Plus, Coach Payton talked about the signing of outside linebacker Frank Clark and how his skill set will fit in here. A pressure player, someone that I remember doing a lot of work on when he came out of the draft. Um, and we followed him, obviously, at Seattle first and then in Kansas City. Uh, it's one of the areas that, you know, that we paid close attention to. And, uh, um, you know, we'll find a role within what we're doing, where he can help us. Uh, I, I think it's always it's always a challenge to find uh, those guys that you can say are pressure players, but he's one of them. And uh, certainly he, he's excelled in the postseason, both in Seattle and, and in Kansas City. So um, yeah, that, 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 that's the vision. Wide receiver Jerry Judy also spoke with the media following Tuesday's practice and talked about his early impressions of this offense and how the tempo of practice is different. It's the different alignments, you know, uh, you know, the alignments really help us with our different vari vari I can't even say the word of route running and stuff like that. Just it just help us not get a help us help the defense not get a, a jump on up just by our lines and stuff like that. So that's that's really big. It's, it's a lot more fast than just getting in and out the huddle. You know, the tempo of just making sure we line up as fast as possible, getting the um, formation, get, scanning the defense, and just understanding our assignment as fast as possible for real. And as for the defense, the players are continuing to learn defensive coordinator Vance Joseph's scheme. Take a listen to what inside linebacker Alex Singleton had to say about it. I think every coach will tell you it's kind of, they give you, you know, the system, but, you know, the players and coaches got to work together. It's not like high school where you can just, you know, you have to do it this way. I think the best part is, you know, with CP and Marcus staying, they were really able to cha not change, but, uh, you know, use a lot of the same verbiage that we had last year. So it wasn't just throwing away everything we've done. And, you know, that the, the some of the guys that have, you know, like Justin have been here for the last seven years playing a high level of defense. So they didn't just throw all that away and, you know, have been able to really combine the two defenses. And so I think for us, it's just, you know, continuing to play together. And, you know, every day we've been growing more and more with that. Plus, we heard from wide receiver Tim Patrick for the first time this offseason. He detailed his journey coming back from that ACL tear he suffered last training camp and how he felt at practice on Tuesday. Just my family, uh, positivity, um, watching a lot of film on myself, uh, it's just a, a daily reminder that it's it's a long road and it's not going to happen overnight. Honestly, uh, I felt great today. Um, like, phys like me out there felt good. I think the thing I need to get back is just seeing the whole field. I think right now I'm just so tunnel vision of making sure I do the right thing and learning a new offense is I'm just tunnel vision and it's not. You ever play Madden when your QB's on, you see the whole field. When he's off, it's small. 
And right now, mine's just small right now. But I'm still make plays, but I'm just not seeing the whole field. And as the offseason comes to an end this week, Coach Payton detailed the new culture he's built here. I, I do think it starts with the ingredients. So the recipe, um, the recipe for culture starts with, you know, who's in the building. Um, it's hard to have the right culture if you don't have the right ingredients. And then it's the attention to every detail. Um, I think there's got to be passion involved with that. You know, and so in the procurement process of players, you've really got to dig into, and it's the hardest thing now for us, is, is finding guys that truly love their, love their job. And it, it's not a slight against, but it's, it's finding the right people to build the culture around. And uh, it's, it, we can evaluate the talent on the tape, but all the other aspects that are challenges in today's NFL that may not have been challenges in the 70s or early 80s, that they're challenges today. There's three fights that you have to win every day. There's a sign in the locker room. Number one, division from within. Number two, your competition. And number three, all right, public perception. Now joining me here inside the Broncos podcast studio is fellow team reporter Phil Milani. Phil, the first day of mandatory minicamps in the books. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, good to of be course. here on day one I know. of mandatory minicamp. I love it. First off, Phil, I want to ask how you're feeling because I know yeah. last night was a really big night for you. Your Denver Nuggets are yeah. NBA champions. Oh, what a story. I uh, know. You know, just from all the guys on the team, years of heartbreak, you know, <laughs> as Nuggets fans growing up in this city, you know, uh, you just think about all these teams as a kid and then the down years that the Nuggets have had and then this recent run of success. It's amazing that they finally got to the mountaintop. And mm -hmm. I think that there's so many stories of inspiration on that team that they provide some examples of, hey, if you could get uh, Jamal Murray getting over his ACL injury, now he's one of the best players in the NBA and he's a champion, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, Nikola Jokic, the narrative about him um, just being like this clunky, you know, out of shape guy. Right. No, like, you know, with hard work, <laughs> he can be a, a two time MVP and NBA finals MVP and now a champion too. So uh, yeah. what a remarkable story. And it was, it was a fun ride. So exciting for this city. I'm surprised you made it into work today, Phil. You know, I will say the <laughs> stress of the last two months, just, you know, every other night almost. It's weighing being down glued. on you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a stressful ride. But I, I'm also kind of sad that it's over now. So I know. it's a weird feeling. Are you going to go to the parade on Thursday? I'll try to. I'll try and to. we'll have to see what happens. They're practicing here, so we'll yep, see. Yeah, that's true. It was kind of cool see. today to hear, you know, the players talk about. You mentioned how motivational it was to see yeah. you guys. like. Jamal Murray and Nicola, you know, reached the finals, but it's motivational for these guys, the Broncos, to yes. come in and, you know, realize that they could do the same thing too. Yeah, and you see this city just come together, you know, all the shots of yeah. the celebrations last night. And, you know, this is a sports city, you know, and right. uh, they really get behind their teams here. And when the Broncos are really good, there's nothing mm -hmm. like that in yeah. this city. So, uh, yeah, I mean, two years ago, the Habs won the Stanley Cup this year. Uh, it's the Nuggets. And, you know, we'll have to see if the Broncos can get back into that conversation because, you know, thinking back to Super Bowl 50, that parade, uh, right. going by Union Station. I know going you were showing into, me pictures of yeah, it today. Going uh, into Civic Center Park downtown. I mean, those are memories that last a lifetime. And I think that uh, those are some special times. And just Definitely. there's nothing like that winning a championship. So uh, getting back to that, I'm sure that, you know, that's why everybody does the work. So uh, 100%. yeah, I think that if you're a Broncos player and you see that you want, you want a taste of that. So oh yeah, that's some motivation, I guess. Definitely. Yeah. Tim Patrick, he talked about it today. Yeah. First even off, on a personal level a too personal for Tim. Level, yeah. yeah. Just to exactly. see everything that Jamal went through mm -hmm. with his ACL tear, you can like sort of just compare that to your own Definitely. road and you're like, okay, if he can do it with hard work, you know, maybe I can do it too. So yeah, um, yeah I think there's some personal connections there where mm -hmm. you can get some, some really good positive motivation. Definitely. It was the first time we heard from Tim this entire off season. Yeah. It was great to hear how he's doing too. He said his body feels really a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I just still remember that day back in training <laughs> camp last year, I know. you know, and him just grabbing his knee and, you know, screaming in pain and just that feeling you feel so bad for him because yeah. 
he was like coming onto the scene, really. You know, like he had he had was. that great year. You know, you think back to that kid touchdown catch he had in Dallas, mm-hmm. and you're like, this guy is a, a legitimate wide receiver. Got in a the, contract in the extension. NFL. Yeah. yeah. So for him to get down, that that was so painful last year. And then you've seen him around the facility every single day working uh, to get back and then rehab. And you know, I think the thing that you talk to these guys who go through this rehab process. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody has their good days, but it's the bad days when you just don't want to do it to be able to push through and get through those days. Uh, that's the, that's what separates people during this rehab process. Mm-hmm. And uh, nobody's got that chip or that edge to them like Tim does. Yeah, yeah. So if, uh, you know, I don't think there's any doubt that Tim has put in the work and that he was going to get back to this point. And, uh, you know, we'll see when training camp comes around, if he's just rolling full on all cylinders, you know, that's mm-hmm. going to be exciting to see. It'll be really exciting. It's great to hear from him and see him back out on the field. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And he's yeah. out there now doing stuff. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll see just, you know, one more month if he's just like keeps working at it. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a process still. I yeah. think, uh, you know, just the first time you're doing new things, adding them in, there's sort of a physical barrier and then there's a mental, mental. barrier. And uh, so it's going to be a process for Tim, but uh, definitely some encouraging signs so far. For sure. Something else that was interesting that Tim said, Phil, was that KJ Hamler is living Mm. with him right now, too. And of course, you know, KJ, unfortunately, has suffered a lot of injuries over the past several seasons, too. And he said that he asked him to move in with him so that they could have this routine together. Yes. You know, they can help each other through this, give each other motivation to, you know, come in and hold each other accountable every single day. I think we all, we all know what KJ Hamler can be, Mm -hmm. you know, and it takes a lot of work to get to that. And, and I think that what Tim was saying was like, you got to have a routine here where every day you're doing the same thing. Don't he, I think he said, don't get bored of your routine, Mm -hmm. keep with it. And then that's, how you can have success out on the field. And, you know, you feel for KJ just with all the injuries he's gone through with that ACL and the hip, the terrible injury, you know, last year was so up and down for him. Um, And then of course this off season working on his own, he gets hurt again, you know, so um, that wide receiving room is packed. There's a lot of depth there. So, you know, you just think about KJ, the guy, he came in with so much potential and, uh, for all, all of these different injuries and things to happen to him, um, it's been a rough road. It has. And so when you can have like a big brother like Tim mm-hmm. who says, hey, my road hasn't been exactly smooth. Why don't you come with me and see how, you know, I work, I yeah. how I do my routine. And then they can each hold each other accountable, you yeah. know. So like those bad days that I mentioned, Tim maybe doesn't want to do the rehab. Well, KJ's there pushing him to do it and then vice versa. Yeah. And it was kind of funny because they said, okay, well, is KJ just like living in your basement? Yeah. And he was like, well, you guys are making it sound like basement's a right. bad thing, you know. He it's said not like he's in a this, man cave. <laughs> yeah. It's not some dark dungeon. Right. So uh, he said that he's living good, better than how he used to be. So. That's That's good. Uh, It's nice to see Tim take care of him. So, you know, it's interesting. Someone brought up the fact that, you know, these core four receivers that this team has had the past, you know, several years, the past three years, you know, Cortland, Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, and KJ Hamler, they really haven't haven't been able to play together. Yeah. Uh, That first year, just uh, with uh, Teddy Bridgewater, when he was here, uh, those few games that they were able to play together, those were the only ones where they, they were all healthy. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like with throw Russell Wilson in there, throw Champagne's, uh, you know, offensive mind in there. And there's reason to be excited about this squad. Um, but uh, it's going to it's gonna take a lot to get there just for them to all be healthy. And, you know, I think training camp will show, you know, what's going to happen with these wide receivers. You know, Definitely, there's yeah. always some guy who unexpectedly shines. It feels like during training camp, mm-hmm. uh, of course, they bring in Marvin Mims Jr. from Oklahoma with their first pick this year. So, like, there's just a lot of competition there. Mm-hmm. So um, it's going to be – that's going to be something to watch all throughout camp. Yeah, and it was – you know, we heard from Jerry Judy as well, sticking on the receivers here, Phil – And it was great to hear him talk about how we kind of finished last season and Mm -hmm. how we felt like everything just kind of was in sync and things were flowing and 
he's looking to start off this season the way that they ended it. Yeah, and uh, you know, you hear, you hear Sean Payton talk about confidence so yeah. much, and that you know, it, uh, the work has to lead to something that you can build on. And I think that what happened at the end of last year for Jerry is definitely something to build on. Oh yeah, the three touchdown game against Kansas City, mm -hmm. you're like, I can do this. Uh, the career high in receiving yards against the Chargers in the season finale last yeah. year. He was the AFC Offensive Player of the Week, you know, for the final week of the season. Mm -hmm. So there was so much positive momentum there that that gives you confidence, you know, if you're a guy like Jerry Judy. And, Definitely. you know, there, he was um, – his name was, uh, you know, circling around trade rumors this off season. He was like, Hey, it's nice to be wanted, but I'm glad I'm with the Denver Broncos. Kind of the same thing that Corlin Sutton said. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is, it's time for Jerry to really take that step. You know, um, the guys that he was drafted with that year, Justin Jefferson with the Vikings, CD lamb with the Cowboys. I know that Jerry feels like he belongs in that same group with yep. those guys. And at the end of last year, he showed what he's capable of. Mm -hmm. So now you go and if, can you do it for a whole year? Or, right. You know, that's the next step here for him. And, yep. uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of optimism around Jerry Judy right now. So, uh, you know, last week we heard Sean Payton even talking about him like, Hey, I'm going to coach him hard. I'm going to be on him because that's what it takes to be great. You know, right. constantly every day. Potential. Yeah. And him. he sees that potential too. Yeah. He talked about how explosive he is mm -hmm. and his loose hips and the, his route running, you know, and so um, it's good to know that the head coach sees that and is going to push him. Right. And uh, we'll see what happens now. Yeah. Coach Payton even talked about Cortland Sutton in that same respect today, too. And, you know, how excited he is for him. You know, we talked about his yeah. speed, how big he is and the potential that he has and wants to really be great. Yeah. And Cortland Sutton's watching film of Michael Thomas. Yeah. He was back to back first team all pros uh, in 17 and 18 with the Saints. So you look at the body types. Very similar. Very similar. So, you know, you watch film of this guy. It's a similar offense that they're going to be running here in Denver. Hey, let, let me see how he did it. Mm -hmm. I'll incorporate some of those things into my game and then see what happens. Yeah. One other thing that coach said, uh, Phil, that I thought was really interesting was he mentioned that, you know, outside linebacker Baron Browning, he's going to start training on camp on PUP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, that is something that uh, you're going to have to watch. You know, pass yeah. rush is uh, crucial in this game is what, you know, Sean Payne was saying that you got to be able to affect the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that you could do that from all different positions. You know, right. it doesn't have to just be an edge guy. You know, he talked about the safeties being able to do that inside linebacker, um, Drew Sanders, you know, when he was drafted, they were like saying, Hey, this guy's a pressure player. Mm -hmm. So um, the Broncos are going to have to find a way to generate a pass rush. Uh, even uh, guys along the interior of the defensive line, you got to be able to get after the quarterback especially when you're playing Patrick Mahomes twice a year, yeah. you're playing Justin Herbert twice a year. Yep. You got to really be able to disrupt the game a little bit here. So yeah, Baron Browning uh, starting the season on PUP. We'll have to see how he can recover um, because he had a pretty good year last year. You he know, did. he was a kind of guy where you're He's like, a solid guy. let's see what can happen with him, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so hoping that he can uh, get back on the field uh, sooner rather than later. Yep, hoping for a speedy recovery there. We have a couple more days of practice here before the everyone break. hits the road for summer break. Yeah. yeah. Everybody always says, oh, are you ready for training camp? I'm like, like give me one more no. week. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> it's, it's nice to have that break, but, and it's also nice it when is. the guys come back, but uh, the break is important. It's a, That's an important stretch where – uh, you Completely can get agree. your mind right. And I think Sean Payton said, when you come back from that break, mm -hmm. it's like you're walking onto an aircraft carrier <laughs> and you're just getting whisked away to some football land right. where that's for all months. that matters for six right. months. So uh, you got to be able to have some balance in your life. And uh, yeah, those six weeks, uh, I'm going to enjoy those. Me too. <laughs> Season will be here before we know Exactly. It. Exactly. Well, Phil, appreciate your time today. Thanks, Thanks appreciate for coming it. on. All right, well, that'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now, Broncos Country. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll meet you right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube tomorrow for another episode recapping mandatory minicamp.